Hi, I'm Donald McIntyre, a senior editor at ETC Cooperative. This is the Ethereum Classic Show, and today our guest is Bob Somerville. Hi, Bob. How are you? Hello. I'm very well, thank you. Bob, I wanted to talk today about the ETC Co-op and what uh, the ETC Co-op does for Ethereum Classic. But before that, can you tell tell me about your background and what you do for the ETC Co-op? Absolutely, yeah. So, um, you know, my professional background is as a software engineer. Um, I worked in the games industry for 18 years. Um, most of that at EA, at Electronic Arts, working on EA sports titles like FIFA, NBA, NHL, UFC. Um, mm -hmm. I worked on a Harry Potter game when I was still in the UK. That was that was fun. That made me very, very popular at kids' parties. It was like... Uh -huh. Working on a Harry Potter game, um, uh, and I came. I, I I'm originally British. Came to Canada uh, to work on FIFA. That, that's why I'm how I got here. Is FIFA's made in the the Vancouver studio. Uh -huh. um, so you know, just moved out. You know, my, kind of an opportunity. I'd kind of wanted to move to North America for a long time. I, um, I thought first California. I went to California when I was you know 21 or so, and it was like, wow, this is amazing. I'm gonna gonna come here. Uh -huh. But yeah, you know, came got a second bite of the cherry, came to Canada. Um, and you know, Vancouver's really nice. And 20 years on here, I here I still am. Um, but yeah, that was my career till uh 2014. Uh then I did some work on uh mobile gaming and just mobile and wearable stuff in general that was kind of kind of hot around that time. Um met a guy in 2014 um in a pub. Uh, talking about Bitcoin, you know, uh -huh. in Vancouver. Bitcoin. That was yeah, in Vancouver. Uh, in Vancouver, just just where I was living in Kitsilano. Uh -huh. You know, just uh, you know, meet a guy in a pub. Oh, have you heard of Bitcoin? Uh, Bitcoin. And uh, and yeah, so you know, um, and I had, but you know, wasn't really active. And then you know, started being good friends with him and going to meetups and and learning and. Uh, and I got to I, I met Vitalik in about July of 2014. Uh -huh. So after the Ethereum project had started, uh, I guess the foundation had just recently been formed, but they hadn't they hadn't done the crowd sale yet. You know, it's like early days, mm -hmm. um, you know, and I got to meet him. I, I think I'd read the white paper a little bit earlier. Um, but yeah, he was he was coming through town. So my, my friend a guy called David Lowy had been involved with Bitcoin for years and years before that. Um, he was actually one of the prior owners of Bitcoin.com. So uh -huh. two people before Roger Ver, uh -huh. he, he, he bought and flipped Bitcoin.com. You know, his first purchases of Bitcoin were like, you know, in the cents, you know, 10 cents or whatever silly range. Yeah. Um, it's incredible how people from Canada are involved in crypto. Yeah. To Vitalik, many many of those in Toronto, um, but yeah, also the you know big big contingent in Vancouver. The first Bitcoin ATM was in Vancouver, um, and you know a very active uh, place called uh, First Decentral and then Decontrol. That's like you know a little community hub of yeah. kind of co working and co interests in uh, you know in blockchain. So you know it goes to this little. Uh, you know, this little place for these meetups, you know, really small yeah. numbers of people. And uh, around that time, you know, it was kind of like you, Bitcoin was kind of all there was. It was, you know, Bitcoin 2.0 ideas. I guess you had Ripple as well before Ripple yeah, turned yeah. Into current Ripple, where it was just like, oh, you know, maybe you can do other forms of consensus. And this is kind of yeah. interesting. And um, it's funny, I remember with that Ripple one in particular, like there was a key video explaining how that consensus worked. And I remember looking at it, it was like about 100 views in the whole world. Uh, <laughs> you know? And it's like, nobody is looking at this stuff. You know, same, <laughs> same on the Bitcoin side. And uh, and then, yeah, so in 2015, I, I ended up, um, I was in Toronto for six months. I was doing a contract there. And, um, you know, and I took the advantage of going to all the meetups and stuff. And it was just orders of magnitude bigger, you know, that uh, I went to regularly went to this one called techno crypto that was run by jeff coleman um and it was just like you know every every week you know here's basically like two hours 
of almost one on one time, you know, like little group of about eight people, maybe. Yeah. And he's like, you know, any of the topics, pick your topic and we're going to talk about it. There was even like a tip jar. It's like, here's a little spreadsheet and here's Bitcoin addresses. And if people put tips in, you know, the one with the most tips, we're going to we're going to do it. Yeah. And it's like, you know, you've got like one of the world class experts offering basically free tutoring on this thing every fucking week for like nothing, you know, like whatever, paying for snacks. Yeah, yeah. And nobody's watching. It's unbelievable. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I, that's really where I went down the rabbit hole of like, this is interesting into I have to get involved, right? You know, this stuff is so early and it's kind of like, you know, you met Tim Berners-Lee and he's like, I'm doing this kind of web thing. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. you interested in this or, you know, like meeting Linus Torvalds when he's just starting Linux and it's like, yeah, I'm doing, I'm just doing this thing. You know, it's just for fun. Hey, Bob, you know C++, don't you? You know, maybe you could help. Maybe and, you can uh, help. Yeah, it's like that. That's how it works. So, so, yeah, I mean, that that was my beginning, really. And the very first thing I was trying to do on Ethereum as my little project was seeing if I could get it working on a smartwatch. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd be doing these mobile and wearables. And uh, and it's like, well, shit, you know, these smartwatches, you know, they're just like little computers. You know, they're not so very different to like a mobile device or anything. And just thinking, well, yeah, you know, could I get it going on a smartwatch? And then, you know, you just go up to a point of sale and like, boop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch and you could do a payment. And, and it was like... This was you Ethereum, know. Ethereum yeah. on your smartwatch. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I started doing. Um, okay. And you know that particular use case obviously didn't pan out. Yeah, but, you know, I started basically working with the C plus plus client team because that'd be my whole career. Uh, and you know, Gav had just left the foundation, so they were kind of needing people to help on that team. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, so I I basically like I volunteered. Um, so it was at a time the foundation had nearly run out of money as well in late 2015. Mm -hmm. And and then, you know, and then Gab had gone. So all of that parity team were, were left. And um, I'm the only person in the world that volunteered to help. Uh -huh. It's like literally, you know, the, the really under-resourced team building this thing. And I'm like, well, hey, I can help. Um, when was that? When was this in 2015? Late, late 2015, yeah. So the then... November, October... Yeah, well, I think I started in about July, so huh. um, that's interesting. It was it was just you know as as the mainnet was going live, frontier, uh, kind of time. You know, I was going to meetups for a, a month or two before that, and then it's like right, it's going live, and yes, yeah, so this the, you know the the contract I was doing there was for TD Securities, so TD banks like securities, you know, exchangey arms, right? So, um. Uh, and I, you know, I never planned to work for a bank. It's funny, a, a guy I used to work with at EA was like, hey, you know, I see you're looking for work. Have you know, have you ever considered working for a bank? And I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, so, like, where in, are you in downtown Vancouver? Like what? And it's like, no, it's Toronto. And I'm like, well, I don't live in Toronto. I've got a family. Like what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, you know, it was good money. And I thought, well, hey, you know, like I, I do want to like, I'm not just a games guy, you know, it'd be good to have like other stuff. Yes. So, uh, you know, so I went there and, uh, and then, yeah, you know, just sort of like fell down the crypto rabbit hole uh, at that kind of time. And, and then, yeah, so I'd been basically like the only person volunteering into that. And, uh, and then in sort of about February, 2016, the ether mm -hmm. price had really picked up, yes. you know, it kind of been flat about 50 cents pretty much for a year or whatever from the launch yes you know it went up to i don't know four or five bucks or something and all of a sudden you know the the really tiny runway they had left i think you know at one point they were like there's only about eight months left uh you know suddenly went to oh we've got two years three years uh -huh. so myself and greg colvin got hired into the c plus plus team and and then that was part time and then rapidly turned full time and it's like well wow you know, like not so many months ago, I was like, well, hey, I'm kind of volunteering and doing yeah, this stuff. Yeah. And maybe I'll be able to find some job at some, you know, Ethereum startup or something, yes. you know, yeah. some paid work or anything. And then it turns into, well, shit, I'm, you know, I'm working for the Ethereum Foundation, right? In the middle, like building, you know, working on the platform. So, uh -huh. so, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was, that was, that's how I, that's my, and, no, and how did you end up in uh, ETC and the ETC cooperative? Right. So, well, that came about because 
um, in late 2017, um, Ming Chan, who was the executive director of the Ethereum um, Foundation, was being shoved out, basically. Mm -hmm. um, she was awful. You mm -hmm. can read all about that in Laura Shin's Cryptopian's book, soon to be mm -hmm. dramatized into a TV uh, series. Uh, um, but I'd I'd left the foundation at that time, but was still, you know, very close with everyone. And uh, so I'd said to Vitalik, you know, is there anything I can do to help? And he was like, well, hey, maybe you could like talk to people about like what the new foundation should be, like what, what would people want to see? So at that time, I ended up basically talking to like nearly everyone and just trying to work out, well, how did Ethereum start? How, what happened with the Ethereum Foundation at the start? You know, how can you get into a place where the executive director is awful? Mm -hmm. Like, what, what was there before that led to that? Mm -hmm. So I did, I did tons and tons of talking to everyone about everything. Um, and as as a follow up to that, I ended up doing an awful lot of bridge building. It's like, well, I've talked to all of these different people and, you know, like they're not all, they're not like horrible people. It's just uh -huh. they've got different priorities. And, uh -huh. you know, like the founders, they all kind of came in. They didn't really even know each other. And then they start working together. And it's like, well, I thought this and you thought that. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, fights and all this, all this stuff. So I was doing a whole bu bunch of bridge building, you know, so I spoke at the uh, uh, Ethereum community conference in paris in march 2018 mm -hmm. shortly before that i'd actually gone to berlin to sort of make peace with with gav because yeah. i've had this you know this big thing about relicensing of the c plus plus client months of work and and then it was sort of sort of sabotaged by them and it's like my god you know you've got parity people and you've got the ethereum foundation people and then they seemingly hate each other and it's like everyone's sabotaging and it's like this stuff is never going to happen, right? You're never going to uh -huh. No, like this, this. Oh. Okay. So we have a small interruption. Have we got a network issue? Okay. We're about uh, so, right. So yeah, I spoke at EdCon in May, 2018 on a similar theme. Um, you know, okay. about tribalism and uh, collaboration and, you know, how we can all work. And at that event, Virgil Griffith had actually invited Anthony Lissardi to speak. Oh, okay. So Anthony was my predecessor at the cooperative. Um, and that was the first ETC talk at an Ethereum conference ever. You know, so Virgil, again, you know, another bridge building kind of collaborative kind of guy trying to, trying to bridge those two. And uh, so Anthony spoke at that event. And like, you know, Vitalik went and Virgil went and various other, you know, pretty senior pe Ethereum people went. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, it was all very, you know, grown up right. and just saying, well, hey, well, you know, what has been happening with ETC in the last two years? Yeah. You know, because, you know, because Ethereum people kind of don't know, right? It was so, um, you know, violent to split. Yes, yes. <laughs> That you you didn't really have many people with with knowledge on both sides you know it's just like well you know oh those atc people you know they they hate they hate ethereum and mm -hmm. you know, they're bitter and oh it's just you know bitcoiners coming in who you know <clears throat> saw an opportunity or whatever and you know and then on the flip side you know etc people going well yeah you know foundation is evil vitalik's a dictator yeah, yeah. you know it was a betrayal and fuck those guys right and uh so you know Anthony he started a, a more productive um relationship and 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 it was really virgil that started that mm -hmm. so um so anthony in turn invited virgil back to ETC Summit in Korea in 2018, which you attended as well. Yeah. Um, and I was also invited. And it I'm was like, more or less oh, September, September, October 2018, no? Yeah, so that was September 2018. I, you know, I was invited back and it's like, you know, do I want to have like a trip to Korea to go to a conference? Like, yeah, yeah sure, yeah. That'll, be, that'll be fine. And um, I'd, I'd met um, Darcy Reno as well. He's another Vancouverite. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd, I'd met him as well independently and it's like all right yeah so you know there's stuff going on and yeah 
so I went to, you know, I went to Korea and spoke and, um, you know, and I got time to, to meet you, to spend time, more time with Anthony. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to spend some time with Charles as well. Uh, I think that was the first, you know, longer conversation that I'd ever had with him. Uh -huh. uh, I got to meet Kevin Lord as well. Um, and, you know, it was all good. Oh, and got to meet Barry. Got to meet Barry Silver too. Um, so and then... And the ETC dev team. Everyone, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that was great. And uh, so in January 2019 um you know i was i was looking for work and um and actually like barry had suggested me for the executive director role you know mm -hmm. coming into a new financial year they were they were thinking well hey you know we want the co-op to be to be bigger right we want to step up what we're doing there mm -hmm. uh, and um anthony had been director usa um christian zoo had actually got kind of an analogous role for china but okay. it was all a little bit wibbly as to how that worked okay. um so i was the first kind of like General. executive director for everything oh okay um so yeah you know barry was just like well hey you know you've you, you know i remember we spoke in in korea you know and had a good impression and you've got connections on the ethereum side and you know like maybe you can you can help. So I got the opportunity and I came. Um, I also, at the same time, talked to ETC Labs and to IOHK as well. Uh -huh. Basically, like all three of those were like, yeah, you know, maybe this can happen. Um, and and that was a sharp contrast with Ethereum at the time as well. You know, I'd been I'd been on the Ethereum side, like working my heart out for four years, and you know, like no market rate offers. It's just like, you know, uh, it. Ethereum was so cheap and the Ethereum Foundation was so cheap as well at the time. Uh -huh. you know, when I was working at the foundation, it was like my worst ever pay ever in my whole career. Uh -huh. You know, it was less than half of what I had been earning before and all, and without any bonuses, any medical health coverage, any vacation time, like nothing. Uh -huh. So bad. Uh, but I was okay with that at the time because it's like, this is an amazing yeah, opportunity. Yeah. Right. A learning opportunity yeah totally and it's like and you know and this can lead to more you know opportunities and even if it doesn't it's going to be an adventure so um but yeah you know like looking for work at that time i was like well look i i can't i can't take crippled payments i've you know i've i'm, I'm married with with kids living in a very expensive city and you know it's not like i'm looking to be a multi-millionaire yeah. But, you know, I, I need to have, you know, a standard of living that's not terrible. So um, on, okay. but on the ETC side, it was like, well, yeah, you know, we, we we are willing to pay market rate. Right. You know, we're not we're you know, we're not looking to screw people. So. Uh -huh. uh, um, so, yeah, on the, on the lab side, that, that would have been like community manager. Uh, uh, but, you know, the conversation that came out of that because it was in the aftermath of of all the mess that had happened with the, uh, you know, the, with the repository stuff and the death yeah. of mm -hmm. C. Dev and so on. So, you know, really the conversation, conversation there was like, well, you know, you're, you're going to be there sort of bridging the East and the West, but you know, there's not really a lot of room for dissent. You know, you are sometimes going to have orders coming from your, your overlords and, you know, maybe you can have an internal conversation, but you know, there's no room for public dissent. So it was like, you know, then <laughs> I'm not, yeah. you know, I'm not going to be a puppet spokesman for stuff I don't believe in. So, uh, huh. um, so yeah, that's how I ended up at the co-op. And when, uh, when did you start? Uh, January 2019. Ah, good. Just after the 51 percent of tax. Ah, that yeah. Same month. So yeah, yeah it was towards so the end of that the, month. The first 51 percent of tax. So yeah. Yeah. Since January 2019, so that is 2021, it's coming, yeah, it's coming up four nearly, years. nearly four years. Wow, that's, that's a lot. Right. Incredible. Yeah, so so Anthony, you know, so it was Anthony and Yaz, and then I was the third. But then it was only a month or so later that uh, Anthony ended up resigning and leaving, um, which was a bit like, oh. Oh, it's me now, is it? Like, I'm uh, up. I don't even know how everything works, but okay. Uh -huh. 
Um, but so, yeah, your role, so your role is a, is is an um, executive director. This is like yeah. the general manager of the whole operation. Of the yes, whole that's right. Yeah. Very good. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I guess I can just say a little bit about the co-op. So uh, the cooperative is a is a non-profit. Um, it's actually a, a U.S. registered IRS reporting 501c3 public charity. That's the full sort of designation. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, what that means is that, you know, we are uh, reporting on our activities, but, you know, we're not we're not paying taxes. We are basically doing public goods. Um, and the mission is is to promote the Ethereum Classic ecosystem, you know, mm -hmm. promote growth and success within that ecosystem. Um, um, the majority of funding over the lifetime has come from Grayscale. So Grayscale have an ETC fund where you can, um, you know, have financial uh, exposure to ETC, but without holding ETC. Mm -hmm. So then that's something that you can use within retirement you know funds and things like that um so that uh had three percent a year annual fees mm -hmm. uh, and a third of that was given to the co-op so that started in in late 2017 um it was actually grayscale and dcg who organized the very first etc summit where the co-op was announced mm -hmm. uh, so they did the work to set up the llc uh, to apply for you know that that uh, non-profit status uh hiring um hiring anthony um anthony uh, organized etc summit 2018 where i was there um you know he'd done work to do with like revamping the the website for ethereum classic itself like you know commissioning a new one mm -hmm. um, you know various grants and projects and things happened yeah getting the word so, out it through 2018 through that time um, community relations that's right and then hiring mm -hmm. yaz so yaz was uh, you know developer relations and he mm -hmm. was um you know not doing core development or anything himself but you know technically competent guy you know running services uh you know helping developers you know get get onboarded on etc Excellent. so you know that's that's really has been you know the the general mission of the co-op you know i guess it's really quite broad is but but essentially it's it's supporting uh the ethereum classic um ecosystem um in a way you know somewhat like foundations would do on other projects yeah but with the key difference being the co-op is not in any kind of privileged position right you know there wasn't a crowd sale that we've got the funds for you know we don't hold a trademark or copyright you know we're not we're not dictating anything you know we are one of however many legal entities choose to co-op you know to collaborate or to participate um but you know there's nothing privileged you know yeah. any person or legal entity could step in and do the same kind of things you know yeah. we have no exclusive yeah. access i think that in that in that sense here in classic is more or less like bitcoin it doesn't have any entity or founder that is there leading like being the alpha leader of the organization or the network or the, or the technology. And the ETC cooperative is, sim is simply one investor who bought ETC, who wanted to help ETC. And instead of uh, doing it directly, uh, he, he decided to organize the ETC cooperative. You know? So the ETC That's right. is what you said. It's not, it's not like a leading organization that has the function of leading uh, anything, but, but supporting. Yes. And, and I mean, obviously, you know, we do provide leadership and direction, but uh, I guess the difference is it's not exclusive, right? You know, we, yeah. we have the position that we have as a result of our prior and ongoing actions, mm -hmm. you know, we, any sort of control and influence and things that we have, you know, we have as a result of what we've done yeah. and that can go away tomorrow. You know, if I turn bad or evil, well, you know, the co-op is not going to be respected, is not going to be listened to. Um, but equally, it's not like I could, you know, I can't really do a lot of malicious stuff yeah. any more than anybody else can because yeah, it is, yes, ultimately, like it, it is, ultimately like, I don't have control, you know. Uh, we like all collectively... Are working together and, and and so something like social media assets or whatever or, or general assets you know so 
you know the the disc the, the community discord uh you know twitter handles um uh the repositories for client software repositories for infrastructure pieces repositories for the um ecip uh, process for the community website you know all of these things are in different hands yeah um and most of those are not mine <laughs> yeah, yeah but that's good yeah yeah it is it is like bitcoin in that sense that it's a collection of people who are volunteering uh, uh even myself if your plan for many years i wrote and i created the content and promoted etc uh, so, so there's many volunteers. There's a big community of people participating, and uh, whenever anyone has a good idea, is welcome, and when whenever anyone has a bad idea, is not welcome and is rejected, no. including no. the EPC corporate. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, and I mean, I guess I'd I'd say the one difference that you have between Bitcoin and ETC on that score um, is just like the the wealth of people involved, right? You know, and I think that's a, a maturity thing. Mm -hmm. uh because bitcoin was the very first and it used to be everything you know that's all there was mm -hmm. so obviously like bitcoin has by far the richest ecosystem and the most number of companies uh involved and um and and now you know funding core developers as well you know that was sort of a a bit of a problem on btc for a while was like you know nobody was kind of getting paid and that kind of worked because most of them probably had Bitcoin early and were kind of OK. Uh, but, it, you know, that wasn't in itself very sustainable. But, you know, then you over time, you've had, well, you know, various companies that are participating start basically, you know, sponsoring and donoring and being benefact, you know, beneficiaries, bene yeah. benefactors, sorry. Um, but, you know, I think, yeah, we do have something very similar in ETC. Caveat, there's not a lot of groups. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, but you know that's 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 a matter of 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 building an ecosystem where you do have more participants yeah it's a matter of uh, the world i think that etc is already positioned for success there's no there's no further steps that it has to do it's already positioned in the leadership in the leadership role smart contracts and proof of work fixed monetary policy it's the only one in the world is the, the now the um, the main thing that has to happen is recognition by the world of that, and that takes time, no? Because if we yeah. were a corporation, and we were to invest a hundred million dollars in advertising, the world would understand that very quickly. But uh, because this is organic, yeah. uh, that's right. And 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 yeah, you know, I think where ECC is lacking is mainly in that um, e ecosystem of things producing real utility. Mm -hmm. You know interesting and useful applications doing real stuff for real people um you know who are um there not just on an ideological basis not just um on a speculator basis but actually seeing well hey you know this is a tool that i can use uh in my life and, and yeah, on that protocol level, as you say, um, you know, I think we're we're really quite close. There's not, you know, there's not major rework or anything that needs happening, and it, and it's more really of saying, well, we need to we need to build stuff on top. Oh, right, um, well, uh, in in the last in last week, we 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 announced or we published the quarter three report, and we we reported that we have uh, a little bit more than five million dollars in funding, so that's gonna last for several years so i wanted to ask you what are the the main projects that say if you had to select two or three projects what are the main projects that the etc cooperative, cooperative is conducting to help a etc sure um so um in previous years it had been the case that the core developers working on the client software um had been elsewhere so first you have had the ETC dev team. Mm -hmm. um, you also had Parity, you know, when Parity were yes. maintaining Parity Ethereum, That's that true. had ETC support. So, you know, you had uh, indirect support for, for ETC there, you know, that, that that they were supporting ETC as well. Mm -hmm. um, um, you, uh, but yeah, you know, you had ETC dev maintaining uh, classic Geth. Uh, and then multi-geth, you had Wake and multi-geth as well. Um, 
I when I joined the um the co-op later that year, um Consensus contributed their Pantheon client into Hyperledger, where it was renamed as Hyperledger Bezu. And as soon as that happened, I actually uh funded development work to add ETC support to that. So Chainsafe did that work um so that we had, you know, we had another client choice. Okay. Um and that ended up being very useful as both Parity Ethereum and uh, multi-get you know later dropped etc support but yeah the the uh, the core developers there were not within the co-op you know they were in etc labs or in parity or at various points in iohk as well mm -hmm. uh, but as of um august 2021 i was able to hire a full-time developer on gezu on 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 bezu right you know prior to that it had been kind of contracted work mm -hmm. mainly around hard forks but yeah, you know, full-time uh, Bezu developer as of August, uh, that's Diego. And then shortly afterwards, in January of this year, uh, ETC Labs exited ETC. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was very happy to have sufficient funding to be able to, uh, you know, to offer a home um, for Isaac and uh, Chris, who were working on the Corgeth client. Mm -hmm. So yeah, for a lot of this year, um, you know, a big chunk of our work is really foundational stuff that's not very sexy or not very visible um, of maintaining that client software. Um, mm -hmm. So um, we did have a hard fork in February, I think of this year with, with Mystique. Um, so that was a, that was a protocol change. We haven't had further protocol changes through this year, but you always have a lot of work to be done on client software that doesn't necessarily change the protocol. You know, it's yeah. bug fixing, it's, performance improvements it's maybe you know debugging development features um so yeah a large part of our work this year has been you know core client, development client, client, development. client, client development uh and you know obviously that is the single most important basic thing for the whole chain yeah. it's like well hey can you run a node can you run an etc node can you know can you stay in consensus have you got a, a client that you know you can connect to for mining you know that's the most foundational and key thing that you can think of uh, uh -huh. co-op also support um the uh the block scout instance the mm -hmm. uh, you know the public uh block explorer yeah um, for many years we've provided free uh rpc endpoints um so uh ether ether cluster is a, dot com is the you know the best known uh url on that we did have a product called um say product a, a, a technology project there which was uh, doing clustering nodes more recently that service is now being provided by a company called rivet mm -hmm. uh, but again nearly all of the wallets that there are nearly all of the dApps uh we'll be using that service to connect to the network you know mm -hmm. we are running nodes which are very heavily used you know lots of traffic going through there but that's, um, that's that's an example of a project that was created by the etc co-op it was yeah. by ATC, so it was very successful because now everybody's using it and now it's being delegated to a private company so that they continue it that that's it that's it you know that that service was very useful but ultimately you know we're a small group and we're not really set up for you know operational support operation, or, yeah what have you you know um um but yeah you know like so the co-op has, has, has done other sorts of work a little bit like that so the the uh the Gawley and cotty test nets for example um you know that was that was work which was co-funded between the co-op and the ethereum foundation to add proof of authority test nets that were yeah. you know very very useful to developers so yeah yeah a key chunk of that work has been um core development infrastructure foundational stuff um yeah. we have always had um you know an element of communications community side um and that has you know ramped up very much in the last few weeks with yourself mm -hmm. uh and other members of our new uh comms team so, you know, we have a, a social media manager, a comms and marketing manager, yourself as the senior editor, uh, and then also uh, events. Um, so that that's, you know, a big piece where the co-op have, have not been doing as much as I would like 
essentially we we had some really fallow years where there was not a lot of funding and it was really like you know you can hire a couple of people um you know like myself and one other or two others and they can do their work and we can pay for hosting and like some little grants and then it's like right we're done that's the, that's the money yeah. um but yeah we're 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 really swinging back on that side and right. uh and also you know uh, looking towards uh, a conference again which has not been the case for for three years so, mainly mainly covid but also financial to summarize then client development and that includes uh core get and hyperledger besu and also yeah. you started development of aragon no yeah so that's another interesting one so um aragon which was previously called turbo geth has been this multi-year kind of project um looking at fundamental sorts of data structures and architecture within client software mm -hmm. so you know it started out at this attempt to turbocharge geth um and and was really kind of a you know research project for a good two or three years to sort of prove hey could you do things in a quite radically different way without changing the protocol uh but that you're going to end up with you know significantly better client software you know wh whether that's like you know less memory use less hard disk use faster syncs uh, you know other kind of basic performance improvements um so that has gone kind of into production mm -hmm. as as Aragon. Um, and if you look at Ethernodes, let me do it now. If you look at ethernodes.org, which is a you know node explorer for Ethereum, mm -hmm. um, you have Geth with 79% and Aragon is number two with nearly nine percent now. So oh, I mean nine percent nice. sounds a bit poor if you're not aware of how these things go. Uh -huh. But really, clients are very, very sticky. Like you know, movements on who's using what client they 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 yeah. change very slowly over time. But yes. but getting to you know that number two spot in I, I don't know how long Aragon itself has been running, like a year or so, maybe not not very long. So it's becoming a very dominant kind of client, a very important client. Right. So yeah, we've 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 done an experimental fork to see what adding ETC support would look like for that um and you know we're basically going to evaluate is that something that we can take on um you know talk to the team are, are aragon going to be okay with us doing that could we you know be working together in the main line in the same way as has happened for bezu uh -huh. so that you know you have first class support um for etc rather than no oh, yeah you know we've got a fork of that and we've added that stuff but you know it's not going back um yeah. If we go first class Aragon, that would be great. I think, yeah, um, I think I think that including uh, Aragon in the portfolio of nodes in EDC is a good idea because it's going to make the life easier for node operators, no? Because it's much yeah. So in an, and then another part in that evaluation is just like, well, if you compare feature set between Geth or Core Geth uh, with Aragon, you know, does it do all the stuff? You know, can can you use it as a miner? You know, is the mining good enough? Uh -huh. um you know are there other features that you know switching to aragon you're going to lose out on you know some key parts which people find really valuable you know is 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 it not only is it production ready just for running a node but you know is it production ready for, for the different kind of use cases you know yeah. is it in a place where miners could switch to it and use it without you know swearing at it and you know oh, uh -huh. this isn't as good and it doesn't work or it's you know we're not it's you know we're not we're not getting the same profits because of xyz or it hasn't got whatever mm -hmm. um and, and you know and the, the same on the exchange sides you know it's really like well hey if this is the answer could this be your only answer you know for for all node operators mm -hmm. but especially you know, exchanges and miners are such key ones. Um, you know, if, if we did this, um, you know, can we go? So, you know, for example, maybe it would mean that we didn't do core geth anymore. Uh -huh. You know, because it's, a, it's another kind of geth variant. Do you need those two? Well, yeah. you know, well, maybe you don't. You know, maybe Aragon is, is absolutely better. Um, and any core geth specific things, which, which, um, you know would not be there well maybe we do the work to make sure that they are there yeah mm -hmm. 
Good. Well, or, or maybe we maintain the three. Maybe that's okay. But we have only got a small team, so maybe that's too diluted at that point. So, so one big function or project is to client development. That's core to Ethereum Plus. The other one is to maintain also key infrastructure that is not the core protocol. For example, Block Scout and Ether Cluster at the time that is being migrated to Rivet. Yeah. And also, you, we recently launched Safe. Yeah, so that's that's exciting. I mean, it, it took quite a few months in the end. I thought, you know, we thought it was going to be easier than it was. But, uh, but you know, we got there. So Safe, which was formerly known as Gnosis Safe, is basically the best multi-sig that's available on Ethereum. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like the, the, the history with multi-sigs and Ethereum is is somewhat different to the setup on Bitcoin. So Bitcoin has built-in support for multi-sig. You know, that, that was just a built-in primitive in the uh, protocol. But for Ethereum, the choice was made not to have a built-in multi-sig. The reason being, you know, that Ethereum is programmable. You can build anything. Yes. So it's like, well, why would you do one multi-sig? You know, we, there can be many multi-sigs, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. different teams, different companies or whatever can build whatever kind of flavor of anything that they like. Yes. So that that's kind of cool. But it was kind of not cool when it turned out that a number of the multi-sigs that were built had horrible bugs in them. Yeah. And, they lost, uh, them. and lost money, most notably the parity one. Yes. Um, twice. <laughs> anyway, so in the <laughs> aftermath of that, the Gnosis multi-sig, you know, very much became, look, this is the one that's the best. You know, this has been audited many, many times. It's been around many, many years. Um so, you know, here you go. So beyond just the on-chain smart contracts, you know, there's a whole bunch of uh, user interface, web front endy things, yeah. Yeah, services. So, yeah, so running a Gnosis safe uh, setup, you know, is, well, hey, you know, you're setting up web servers and databases and, uh, you know, a whole bunch of things that are like wrappers around the, uh, the on-chain um smart contract yeah. you know if all of those web things went away you know your money's still there yes, you, yes. Know, you, you can interact with those smart contracts you know just through you know yes. any any kind of means you know you're just doing transactions on it as long uh, as you have your private keys the smart contract and the money's there whatever happens right. in the middle it doesn't matter you can still have access to to your money and everything on the blockchain that's right so, yeah, no, I mean, just more generally on multi-sig for anyone that doesn't know what multi-sig is, um, you know, normal use of cryptocurrencies, you have a single person that owns an account. You know, you have an account or a wallet, whichever, uh, and, you know, one person is controlling that. You know, one person has got the private keys who, to be able to sign a transaction to move money out of that that they control. So the downside to that is, you know, if you lose your private keys, uh, tough. You can't ever move your funds and they're, they're stuck forever. Uh, that is not an uncommon thing. I myself have been a victim of that from Ether I got in the early days, which would now be worth an awful lot of money and I don't have it. And uh, there you go. That's, that's the crypto stories. Many uh, people have got mm -hmm. those. Yeah. So, yeah, what you're doing with a multi-sig is saying, well, hey, we'd actually like a group of people collectively controlling uh, an account or wallet. And, you know, and that's configurable. So say uh, there's three of you and two of you have to sign to, to move anything. Um, and that that can be useful um, both for, you know, just more security. You know, if your computer gets hacked, mm -hmm. if you, you know, if whatever you get kidnapped and someone's going to whack you on the head with a, you know, a lead pipe, sign this. You're like, well, I can sign it, but I can't, you know, the others... Yeah. Yeah, um, or, or, well. mm -hmm. or just like a you know a governance thing you know if you're running a company you're running a project together and you've got you know some funds that you're managing together uh yeah you don't want a single person having the ability to you know to just run away with it or do anything or get hacked um and then the other thing that you can do usually with multi-sigs is if somebody loses you know is lose loses their private keys well the other people you know, can update the multi-sig and, and add a new signer in and, and remove the one 
you know so right yeah i've lost control of that old account and my keys or whatever so yeah i've made you know i've made new ones and can you add the new me back in so you know you have a social recovery kind of aspect so mm -hmm. you know many many good features of a, of a multi-sig and uh and so yeah you know we we brought safe to to etc so it's so it's not creating a single instance of it because anyone who can create a multi-sig wallet you know you're making your own wallet instance you know you can have many many multi-sig wallet instances on the network um but the one thing that you do have an instance of is is the the web stuff yeah. so now if you if you go to multi-sig.etccooperative.org you will see there um uh, you know, a a web front end for interacting with safe wallets, for creating them, for for using them, for tracking them. You know, some really useful tools, um, which um, you know, allow people to to yeah. use that best of breed um, multi sig on etc. Um, yeah, it's an excellent wallet, and it works like a wallet, and you connect your own private keys through your MetaMask or your wallets that you use. And then you create multi sigs on it's it's amazing it's a great product. Uh, bueno, let's talk about the last thing. The last thing is that um, there's a a, a a grants program in the horizon. Do you want to talk about that? That's right. So um, so yeah, you know, talking about you know the number of entities in ECC and so on. Um, something that happened in July of this year, which was really exciting, is I got contacted by Antpool, and it's like, hey, you know, can we have a call? And it's like sure i know what we what 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 that's about but 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 sure um but then yeah like the the ceo and the cto and a project lead and you know really senior people were there uh -huh. and um and and yeah they they basically said well hey you know we're we're looking to support the ethereum classic ecosystem with ethereum moving to proof of stake which mm -hmm. ended up happening in september all of a sudden you have a real alignment of interests uh, between mining companies and etc uh -huh. you know etc were a you know a small a small player within mining prior to that transition you obviously did have support for for, for bitmain a6 for mining ethereum classic as well as uh, as well as ethereum mm -hmm. um but yeah with with that transition um etc has become you know one of the one of the very largest uh um mining ecosystems within the whole of blockchain you know if you look at proof of work chains um you you've you've got bitcoin dogecoin uh litecoin and litecoin and etc so you know etc is like you know in that sort of number four spot right now but it has been in number three uh at various times um you know we have had uh you know lot lots of transaction volume um, you know, quite regularly, there's 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 a lot of liquidity, huge number of exchange listings for ETC. Mm -hmm. So within Power World, you know, ETC is a big deal, yeah. and uh, and with Ethereum, you know, having moved to the other side, all of a sudden ETC are a lot bigger of a player within that world. So yeah. Paul, um, basically dedicated uh, ten million dollars. Um, towards funding of the etc ecosystem mm -hmm. uh, so in the meantime you know i've had a lot of conversations with them working out well how, you know what does that mean how is it going to work and you know are, th are they going to be like investing in projects so kind of almost like a vc incubatory kind of thing or is it going to be grants or you know is it is that going to be open or are we going to pick main projects and all of that uh, but you know a lot of that has really come to uh clarity Yes, just over the last couple of weeks, um, and so I attended WDMS in Cancun a week or so ago, which is World Digital Mining Summit, I think, uh, which is uh, Bitcoin's main conference that they had, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I spoke at that, and so did X May Lee, who is uh, head of marketing globally for for Bitmain. And, you know, in a large chunk of her talk uh, was about Ethereum Classic specifically. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, and uh, so, you know, we you, you wrote an article about that uh, mm -hmm. as well, more recently on the C Corp website. Um, yeah. But yeah, ETC is a it's a big, important thing, uh, you know, for Bitmain now. And uh, so. So there's going to be uh, a, a DAO created and it's going to be a future grants program. 
Well, it's it's being called a DAO, but it's not actually a DAO yet. Maybe it will be someday. Um, but actually, you know, what the, those funds as initially uh, not just pledged, they they were placed in a safe, no, in a safe multisig actually, uh -huh. um, but on the Ethereum main there as Tether. So mm -hmm. it was 10 million of USDT. Um, but then what happened in the meantime is, you know, we've been working on doing a safe instance for ETC, you know, and it, it took longer than we thought. But, you know, that that finally made it live um, a, a couple of weeks ago. And what um, Antpool did, again, without telling or coordinating with us, um, they just did it, is, is they spent half that money on ETC. Uh -huh. You know, they on Binance they swapped half of that tether for ETC, and then they deposited it in a gnosis safe in a sorry in a safe instance that they'd made on the ETC mainnet. So they created a safe wallet on ETC, and they put five million dollars in ETC in that in that wallet. That's 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 correct. So you know, not only did we get get that safe instance up and going on ETC, it's holding significant funds. You know. Yes. almost day one of it being available yes. which i think you know is, is just like this fantastic you know show of 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 of, of faith and trust and security of, of saying well hey you know hold significant chunks of money in self-custody with a multi-sig on etc yes. and you know and that's that's pretty new i mean yeah a lot of people will be self-custodying etc you know on a on a ledger or what have you um, or even just in better mask. Um, but yeah, you know, we're up to the next level now. Yeah. So yeah, just to explain a little on the ground. So as I was saying, you know, that that sort of wobbled its way along for the last few months, but uh, has reached clarity of of saying, well, yeah, it's all going to be grants. You know, yeah, yeah. Not, they're not going to do any of that kind of investment. -y, you know, here, we'll invest in you and take a slice of equity or, you know, any of that. Yeah, it's just, it's be just grants. early grants. Mm -hmm. That's it. So, um, so yeah, you know, like the details of that are not utterly finally there, but, uh, but there is actually a telegram group now um, where people are starting to talk about potential, you know, applications. Uh, you know, there is actually a website up with a form that you can fill in, but it's like, that's not, final i am working and you know we'll work with with bitmen uh and ampool towards you know something fully baked um and and yeah really the goal is to is to get that first round you know happening before the end of this year okay. you know i'd really like to go into 2022 oh, having okay. done a first round of 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 grants being oh. given out and it may yeah. all be a little bit seat of your pants kind of this process is not necessarily going to be the long-term process, but, you know, really wanting to get some of those funds into the hands of, of, no, of no. DAP developers, you know, like, uh, as we'd said, talking about the co-op in terms of the protocol and infrastructure, you know, that's all kind of going good oh, and we're oh. working on that. And it's like, you know, we don't really need suggestions on how the protocol can be changed it's like, you know, you know, it's good as it is. There's some clear, you know, pieces to to work on in terms of, uh, you know, the maturity of the virtual machine and uh, bloat management and, and privacy, you know, is another area where, you know, there's no real um, working answers there on ETC. But yeah, the, you know, the aim of the grants program is really it's at that social level. You know, it's getting humans building useful projects and tools yeah. to attract users, you know, and to to build up uh, the actual utility of ETC uh -huh. beyond just speculation and uh, uh, or ideological preference. Good. Well, excellent. Thank you very much, Bob, for this uh, uh, interview, your time and, and the summary of all the things that the ETC cooperative is doing. And maybe we should do this every quarter. So maybe uh, next quarter we can do again and do an update of what's going on. At the absolutely. East. Yeah, no, it's been it's been a pleasure. And uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Great. Okay. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye.